Hello everyone. Percentages is a very well known topic that comes from aptitude and most of us know it and use it in our day to day life. But there's a concept called as successive percentage. Yes, many of you would be listening to this concept for the first time. Successive percentage caters to multiple topics in aptitude. For example, if I talk about a very simple problem of simplification, some problems from mensuration, some problems from allegations and mixtures, and a variety of problems that comes from compound interest, and another concept that is called as discounts. So I have given you a few examples which can be solved, or the questions on these topics can be solved by a single concept which is called as successive percentage. Yes, my dear friend, there are problems which take enough of time. In fact, they are left unsolved in the competitive exams because the calculation is heavy. But with the use of this concept, which is called as successive percentage, you will be able to solve these problems in almost no time and that too without pen and paper. So do you want to check this concept? Let's see what use we have of this concept in various topics of aptitude. Hello everyone. Successive percentage, a very important topic that comes from aptitude. Now gone are the days when we used to solve most of the questions with the traditional method of mathematics. Since we are going to compete with millions and millions of learners around the country, we have to adopt a method which is not widely known to everyone or they do not adopt this method actually. So let's see what this method is all about and what are the applications and the actual benefits in aptitude. Let's see that. Now here are some of the applications wherein we will be using successive percentage concept such as compound interest, a very difficult considered topic, mensuration, another important topic, discount that comes from profit and loss, allegations and mixtures that actually is a subtopic of ratio and proportion and then simplifications. So you can see the wide range of benefits that we have from a single topic called as successive percentage. Now since I have been speaking about successive percentage for the last 20 seconds, let us actually understand what this method is. Now let's see what the concept is. For me to make you understand the concept i have to take an example suppose i have 100 rupees with me and bank provides me 10 percent of increment on this value therefore my amount becomes 110 rupees now i'm taking some simple values so that we can understand the concept thoroughly next year probably bank actually provided me 20% of the increment. They have been so generous that they have actually doubled the interest amount. And now you can see 110, 20% is rupees 22. Now you have to be a little quick in your calculations while you are preparing for aptitude examinations. So my value here becomes rupees 132. Now, if someone asks you, what is the total interest that you have gained in this span of two years, you cannot actually add these two values, though you got 10% and 20% for two years. But as I said, you cannot simply add it. If you're going to do 10 plus 20, you will be achieving only 30%. Now, 30% of 100 rupees should be only rupees 30 but as you can see the increment is not 30 rupees the increment is rupees 32 so there has to be a certain methodology wherein i can calculate the overall increment or the overall decrement and that particular concept is called as successive percentage so without wasting much time, I would like to give you a very important and interesting formula of successive percentage. And that is A plus B plus AB by 100 percent. 
So this is my overall formula for successive percentage where A and B are nothing but these percentage values. So my A in this example was 10. My B is 20. Therefore, my A into B becomes 200. Putting the values in the formula, I end up getting, because I need to cancel these zeros, I end up getting 32%. Now, most of you will understand this. 32% of my principal amount, that is rupees 100, is nothing but rupees 32. So what I have done is, instead of doing it a simple addition way, I have used a formula which is A plus B plus AB by 100 percent. Now, please do not underestimate the concept. It looks simple, but it is huge. It has a huge benefit across the aptitude concepts. Now, in some of the cases, we will be putting this concept and we will understand the utility of it. Let's quickly take some examples. You know, one of the most difficult topic that we have in aptitude, especially in terms of calculation, is compound interest. So what I've done is I have pulled a question, a good difficult question from compound interest. Now, when I'm using a word difficult, I'm actually talking about a cumbersome technique or the time taken to solve a particular question. It may not be difficult, but if it takes more time to solve, then I would call it a difficult one. So let's see how we can solve a most difficult question from compound interest topic using the concept of successive percentage. I have put the formula at the top so that we can refer it as and when required. Now let's look at the question. The difference between simple and compound interest compounded annually on a certain sum of money for two years at 20% per annum is rupees 16. The sum is now please let us understand the question first of all. So the question says the difference between simple interest and compound interest calculated for two years at 20% per annum is rupees 16 and we have to find out the sum here sum refers to the principal amount. Now for those who do not recall or remember the formulas for compound and simple interests let me put that this way. Simple interest is equal to principal multiplied by rate of interest multiplied by time divided by 100. Where rate and time or rate is in percentage per year and time is in years. The formula for compound interest is principal multiplied by 1 plus rate of interest by 100 to the power t minus p. So these are the formulas that we have for simple and compound interest. Now certainly you should know one more concept here and that is compound interest is generally more than simple interest. Compound interest is bigger than simple interest. When we will discuss compound and simple interest in a separate video, I will explain this again in detail. So over here, the question says compound interest for two years minus simple interest for two years is equal to rupees 16 and rate of interest is given as 20 percent so we have to solve this question and we have to find out what is the value for principal now conventionally if you probably do not know the method of successive percentage how will we solve it we will put the values or the formulas for compound and simple interest let's do it this way so i do not know p 1 plus Rate of interest is known to me, which is 20 by 100. Time is known to me, which is 2 minus P is not known to me minus. Now I have to put simple interest as well, which is P multiply by rate of interest multiply by time divided by 100. And that's equal to 16. Now using this particular equation, I have to get the value of P. Can you imagine solving this equation within 20, 30 seconds in a competitive exam? Absolutely no, because even if I take P common here, that's what I have to calculate. Even if I do that, you look at the complexity of the equation. So it is still complex enough. You know, even if I take P common, 
this is how my equation looks like and can you assume taking this bracket in the denominator of 16 to solve the value of p i would rather solve or i would rather leave this question honestly i would not solve it in competitive exam but with the concept of successive percentage let's see what we can achieve here now one thing is sure compound interest has the concept of successive increment simple interest does not have it because in case of simple interest the interest remains same every year which means in case of compound interest we have to apply the formula of successive percentage Whereas in case of simple interest, it will be 20% plus 20%. That is 40% for two years. 40% of what? Of principal definitely is equal to 16. Now I need to know the value of compound interest for two years here. So what do I do? I'll put the values of A and B from the question. What are my A and B's? In this particular case, my A is also 20 and my B is also 20. So let me solve it. 20 plus 20 plus 20 multiplied by 20 divided by 100. So I end up getting 44%. Now let me tell you one very basic thing here. After few questions, you will be able to actually remember this data that 20 and 20 becomes 44 in case of successive percentage. But over here, let's put the values. So 44% minus 40% of principal is equal to rupees 16, which means 4% of principal is equal to 16, which means upon solving, I can get that 1% of principal is equal to 4 rupees. Now I can directly solve it, but for your benefit, I would put the values. Values as in, I'll convert 1% 1 as 1 by 100 of principal is equal to 4. And therefore my principal comes out to be rupees 400, which is option number D. Can you believe this? We actually solved this question without using pen and paper, or I would rather suggest you to do it without pen and paper, wherein if we were following the traditional method, we were not in a position to solve it actually. So this is the basic and the most important benefit of having a concept like this. And remember, this is just one such application. There are few more left. Let's take quickly another question. Now this time it is from mensuration. Let's read the question and you will yourself judge whether this question is an important one or not. I have actually seen this question in mostly all of the examinations. So the question says, if the length of a rectangle is increased by 10% and its breadth is decreased by 10%, then what will be the change in its area? Now, this looks like a simple question. Why? Because if suppose there is a rectangle which has a length as L and breadth as B, then the area of the rectangle would look like length multiplied by breadth. But now what has happened? The length is increased by 10% and the breadth is decreased by 10%, which means the length is actually increased by 10% and the breadth is decreased by 10%. So this is how my new rectangle looks like. So this is my initial area. And then I have to calculate the final area as well. But for that, I need to put the length. So length is increased by 10%. Now I know percentages pretty well. So I can write it as 1.1 L. And I know percentages and therefore I can write breadth as 0.9 B. Remember, I have increased the length by 10% and decreased the breadth by 10%. So my final area becomes 1.1 L multiplied by 0.9 of B which is nothing but because 11 nines are 99 and since i have to move it by two decimals i'll put it this way so this is what my new area is but the question is asking me what will be the change in area now if you remember percentage change in area 
a percentage change in any physical quantity is determined by final minus initial divided by initial multiply by 100 percentage so over here my final is 0.99 lb minus my initial is lb divided by lb multiply by 100 luckily i can cancel lb but still i'll be left with 0.99 minus 1 multiply by 100 now this is a multiplication for overall value which will be 0 0.01 that's a negative multiply by 100 and i end up getting minus one percentage that means my area will decrease by one percent and that's my answer but you know how much time we actually spent on a question which was supposed to be done without pen and paper that makes it irrelevant actually that makes my life difficult in a competitive exam so then what do we do obviously we will use the concept of successive percentage now what are my a's and b's here my a is increase in length by 10 percent so my a is 10 percent my b is decrease in breadth by 10 percent so obviously it will be minus 10 percent now you see what can i do percentage change a plus b since my b is negative it will become minus 10 plus a multiply by b upon 100 and percentage so 10 and 10 gets cancelled 100 and 100 gets cancelled and i end up getting minus one percent that's my answer can you believe this we did a question actually in no time whereas when we were solving it with the regular conventional method we spent enough of time remember this is just one more application of successive percentages let's take one more discounts now this is something which is again important and people do solve it because they feel that discounts is an easy topic so let's see how do we do it first of all read the question the mark price of a shirt is rupees thousand so what do we do we actually pull the information and we write it somewhere so there's a mark price of thousand rupees a shopkeeper offers a discount of 10 percent on the shirt so discount offered is 10 percent and then again offers a discount of 20 percent on the new price so the second discount is 20 percent wonderful and then again offers 30 percent discount on the new price okay so there's one more discount of 30 percent what is the overall discount offered now there have been three cases wherein the discount was offered 10 percent 20 percent and 30 percent and the question is what is the overall discount now can i call it overall discount as 60 percent absolutely no because the discounts have been offered on successive values now by now you must have understood what is a successive value so let's see how we can solve it first of all we'll solve it in the conventional method so what is my conventional method i had thousand rupees as the mrp 10 percent of discount which means it will become 900 rupees quite easy then i had 20 percent of discount now this time this 20 percent will be on 900 rupees so i am good at calculations and hence i can write it as 180 rupees so my value becomes 720 rupees but there's one more discount and this time it is 30 percent now here people feel a little fidgy because 30 percent of 720 i know it has to be 216 so what am i left with i am left with a value of 504 rupees but please remember i have been doing it flawlessly you will probably take some time to calculate now what has happened a mrp of 1000 rupees has become 504 which virtually should be my selling price so the question is talking about overall discount now the discount is 1000 which was mrp minus my selling price so it is actually 496 rupees now in terms of percentage that is percentage discount obviously 496 divided by the mrp and 
hence it is multiplied by 100 to calculate percentage so it gives me 49.6 percent of discount which is my option number d now this is my conventional method what do i do if i have to calculate this value by successive percentage now people will think that over here there are three instances but we have the formula only for two instances so let me make it very clear you can't have a formula for three instances such as a plus b plus c plus a b c by 100 no my dear we do not have a formula for three cases so what you have to do you have to solve two at a time so for instance my first case is where my a is 10 percent now why i am putting minus sign because it's a discount case so the value of my product is getting down my b is minus 20 percent and hence when i calculate successive percentage for the first and second case i get minus 10 minus 20 which becomes plus 200 i'm just putting the values in the formula nothing special that i'm doing so it becomes obviously minus of 28 percent that's the outcome of D1 and D2. Now, for all the three cases, I have minus 28, then my third value is minus 30. Then, because both of them are in positives, I have to put a plus sign so that my next value becomes 840 by 100, obviously. So, zero gets cancelled. So, it becomes minus of 58 plus of 8.4 and I get a value which is 49.6 percentage and that's my answer directly. So this is one more way of calculating a question based on discounts. Let's take one more such application. Now this is one of the most difficult application of successive percentage. Why? Because we will be actually solving a question which usually most of the people leave in examinations. So let's see what the question is and for your information this question comes from ratio and proportion a flask contains 80 liters of concentrated acid from this 8 liters of acid was removed and 8 liters of water is added again 8 liters of solution was removed and 8 liters of water is added what is the concentration of acid in the resultant solution now this question that comes from allegations and mixtures I would rather solve it in both the ways first of all obviously the conventional method let's see what it is so there was a cask which was having 80 liters of concentrated acid 8 liters of it is removed so what happens we are left with 72 liters of acid and then 8 liters of water is added so 8 liters of water and 72 liters of acid that has happened after first removal and replacement now next time again there is 8 liters removed but remember this time this 8 liters actually comprises of acid as well as water and what will be the ratio in which it will be accumulating or it will be having acid and water it will be the same ratio in which it is there in the mixture which means 72 parts of the total of 8 liters will be acid whereas 8 parts of the total will be water i hope you understand this concept of ratio and proportion so when i solve it i will be getting that out of 8 liters 7.2 liters is acid and actually the remaining of 0.8 liters is water and then we are adding again 8 liters of water so out of 72 if i remove 7.2 liters of acid i will be left with 64.8 liters of acid and the remaining that is because there was the initial quantity of 80 liters so remaining 15.2 liters of water now you would think why has it become 15.2 because out of 8 liters 0.8 was removed but then we have added 8 liters of water that is 
through the replacement process and now the question is after these two methods because this is the second thing that we have done what is the concentration of acid in the resultant solution now concentration of acid in the resultant solution would be calculated by the amount of acid left divided by total acid in the container or the total quantity of the mixture so while you calculate this let's do it 8 8s are 64 8 ones are 8 and i'll be getting 0.81 as the concentration value which is my option number b now this is my conventional method let's apply the method of successive percentages here now you can see out of 80 liters 8 liters was removed 8 liters of 80 liters is nothing but 10 percentage next time also 8 liters was removed which is again 10 percentage but as i said since it is decreasing the concentration i will have to put a negative sign with them so what will be my overall effect it will be a plus b plus a b by 100 and i'll end up getting minus of 19 percentage which means how much of the percentage is left it will be 81 percent and that's actually my answer now this is where you should understand the difference there is a method which is actually taking enough of time and no no doubt that when you will solve the question using this method you will actually double check it whereas if you will adopt this method there is very very less chance of getting it wrong i hope you understood one more application of successive percentage and this was one easy question of allegations and mixtures let's take one more now you may have seen such questions very frequently in examinations in fact the first five questions will have a question like this now this is like 1.02 to the whole power 4 now there's no rocket science here what you have to do is you have to simply multiply it four times and you will end up getting the answer honestly this time i will not even multiply and show you the conventional method i will straight away show the successive percentage method you have to be with me because i can't actually waste my time multiplying these values one after the other this is going to be a huge time waste actually so let's see how we do it for this you have to be with me for another 10 seconds be with me so 1.02 I can actually say that 0 0.02 which is the decimal part is nothing but 2% more than 1. Would you agree? Because 2% of 1 is 0 0.02. 2% of 1 is 0 0.02. So 2% more than 1 makes it 1.02. So actually what I am doing is I am getting a 2% then again a 2% then again a 2% then again a 2% because that's what the multiplying factor is so it is 2% 2% 2% and 2% so rather than calculating it this way by multiplying the values i would rather use the successive percentage method now since i do not have a formula to do it in this way wherein a b c and d can all be solved at one go so what i'll do I'll solve A and B together. I'll solve D and C together. And then whatever will be my values, I'll solve them together. Do you understand? Because I have a formula wherein I can put only two values at a time. So let's put them. So 2 and 2. So my A is 2. My B is 2. And my A into B becomes 4 by 100. So I get 4.04. .04. So my this value becomes 4.04. .04, so as this one just be with me and you will see the magic here of successive percentage so 4.04 .04 and 4.04 .04. .04. now this time this is my a and this is my b though i need not solve it further because i have got my answer but still for your understanding i'll do it so 4.04 plus 4.04 .04 plus now you can understand this is 4.04 .04 multiplied by 4.04 .04 divided by 100 so let's see so 4.04 .04 plus 4.04 .04 makes it 8.08 .08 plus now i am not going to solve this particular value 
don't worry i am not going to do it in examinations either because i know the trick of actually rounding of the values so instead of taking it as 4.04 and 4.04 .04, i would rather take it as 4 and 4 which will give me 16 and 16 upon 100 will be my value so it becomes 8.08 .08 plus 0.16 which will give me 8.24 percentage of 1 because that's where we started this question from so 8.24 percent of 1 will be nothing but 0 0.0824 now 0 0.0824 increment of 1 so what is the value 1.0824 that's my answer to the question now can you imagine this is such a simple way of solving a simplification based question you can practice certain questions of this category and you can make full use of a concept which is not a conventional method whereas it can be solved or it can be used to solve multiple applications across the aptitude topics we will discuss some more applications and some more variety of questions based on successive percentage in our coming sessions. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from Upgrad.